Welcome to Electron Line. Now we'll start a section on distance, velocity, and time kind of problems. And there's a lot of different ways in which the problem can be set up and a lot of different ways in which the problem can be solved. The main approaches to any of these problems are the following equations. We first want to write that the distance is equal to the velocity times the time. So this equation is going to be used in just about every one of these types of problems. Sometimes the problem can be solved that we can say that the distance traveled by one mode of travel equals the distance traveled by another mode of travel. Or sometimes what we can do is we can solve this equation for velocity and velocity would then be equal to distance divided by time and sometimes we can say that velocity of one equals velocity of two or Sometimes we can solve the problem as follows by solving this for the time. Time is equal to distance over velocity. And we can solve the problem by saying that time 1 equals time 2. These two approaches, this one right here and this one right here, tend to be the most common type of approaches to these types of problems. But again, there's a lot of different variations and a lot of different approaches, and they don't always work. So it's always good to start with this kind of concept that the distance traveled equals the velocity times time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this example right here and realize that the typical approaches are not going to work here but that this equation is still the key to solving the problem. So let's read the problem. It says that a car can travel a distance of 60 miles in one quarter of the time a bicycle can travel the same distance. A bicycle can cover one-third this distance in one hour and 20 minutes. How fast did the car travel? Hmm, seems kind of an odd way of stating the problem, but let's see if we can anchor ourselves to this concept right here and say, all right, if I want to find the velocity of the bicycle, I can take this equation and solve it for V. V is then equal to the distance divided by the time. And I could also say that let x equal the velocity of the bicycle. That. And then, since the car can travel the same distance in one quarter of the time, that means the car will be twice, uh, four times as fast, so 4x will be equal to the velocity of the car. So what we can do now is we can say we can come up with the velocity of the bicycle by plugging in x right here. So we can say that x is equal to the distance traveled by the bicycle divided by the time the bicycle took to travel that distance. And that will give us the velocity of the bicycle. And it tells us that the bicycle can cover one-third this distance, so one-third of 60 miles. So one-third of 60 miles is the distance the bicycle travels, and it does so in a time of one hour and 20 minutes. So one hour and 20 minutes. Now 20 minutes is one-third of an hour, so what we can say is that x is equal to one-third of 60 divided by one and one-third hours. Or, I guess I come over here to continue with the problem, I can say that x is equal to 20 divided by one and one-third, which is four-thirds of an hour, and this of course would be miles, and this would be four-thirds of an hour, and then if I, if I divide by fraction, same as multiplying by its inverse, so x is equal to 20 multiplied times 3 over 4, that would be miles per hour. And of course, 3 quarters of 20, that means x is equal to 15 miles per hour. So by using the equation distance equals velocity times time and solving that equation for velocity and then replacing velocity by x, which represents the velocity of the bicycle, then we take the distance traveled, which is one-third of 60 miles, which is 20 miles, and the time, one hour and 20 minutes, which is four-thirds of an hour, that gives us a velocity for the bicycle of 15 miles per hour. And then since x represents the velocity of the bicycle and 4x represents the velocity of the car, so then we can say for the car, 4x is equal to 4 times 15 miles per hour. And so therefore, 4x 
is equal to 4 times 15 or 60 miles per hour and that would then be the velocity of the car and so again the key equation for these type of problems is distance equals velocity over time sometimes you need to equate distances to each other sometimes we need to equate the time to each other in this case it was simply a matter of finding the velocity in terms of distance over time and then relating that to the velocity of the car and that is how it's done